Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. <coughs> Continuing on and discussing the manners of advising. And we mentioned the narration of Hudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah ta'ala who said, the believer, sta- uh, the believer conceals the sin of his brother and advises him, while the evildoer disgraces and condemns him. Ibn Rajib rahimahullah ta'ala with his fiqh and wisdom he said, this is what Al Fudail has mentioned as being from the signs of advising and condemning. Listen to this. This has given us the principle here. And it is that advising is linked to secrecy, while condemning is linked to publicizing. That does not ne- necessitate that every time you publicize an error, that this is backbiting or this is that. No. But rather. It shows that there's a link here because if someone, again, their sin is open, then you can respond open because it's already known to the people. It's already a danger to the people. It's already a threat to the Ummah of Muhammad and the Minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah. So therefore, it may call for an outward refutation, an outward response. But if this person, for example, you're in a gathering, they had a slip of the tongue or... They made a mistake in a, in a, a personal gathering or what have you, or you came across the fact that they have this, this sin or this mistake. Then no, you should not uh, advertise that openly, but rather you should advise them secretly. So that's an important qaida. This, as he said, this is what Fadail has mentioned as being from the signs of advising and condemning. And it is that advising is linked to secrecy. Advising linked to secrecy. While condemning is linked to publicizing. It used to be said, whoever commands his brother towards doing good at the head of a gathering, then he has condemned him, or it is something with this meaning. The Salaf used to hate that commanding good and forbidding evil be done in this manner. Instead, they loved that it be done privately between the one commanding and the one being commanded. And again, this is the, how Ahlul Sunnah, the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah, between Ahlul Sunnah. For indeed, this is from the signs of sincere advice. This is since it is not the goal of the one who is advising to spread and publicize the faults of the person he is advising. Rather, his goal is only to put an end to the evil that he has fallen into. As for expressing, uh, spreading and exposing someone's faults, then that is from the things that Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have forbidden. And Allah, may he be exalted, says, Verily, those who love that the evil and indecent actions of those who believe should be propagated and spread, they will have a painful torment in this world and in the hereafter. And Allah knows, and you know not. And had it not been for the grace of Allah and His mercy on you, Allah would have hastened the punishment on you, and that Allah is full of kindness, most merciful. The ahadith concerning the virtue of keeping the faults of the others secret are many. Some of the scholars would say to those who are commanding towards good, strive hard to conceal the faults of the sinners, for indeed exposing their faults shows a weakness in Islam. The thing that deserves the most to be concealed is one's faults. This is an important qaida. If only we went back to the treaties. We say we follow the Salaf of this Ummah, but why are we so far from the, the statements of Ibn Rajab that he's mentioning here and those principles? Even we study this book, and many of us continue on with the same behavior of attempting to expose one another's faults, especially those of your brothers from ah- and sisters of Ahl Sunnah. It is for this reason that spreading someone's evil and indecent actions is linked to condemning. And they are both from the affairs of the evildoer, since it is not the goal of the evildoer to put an end to the fault, nor the believer avoids that fault or defect. Rather, his only goal is to spread and publicize the defects found in his believing brother, and to destroy his honor. Allahu Akbar. Listen, listen to this wisdom. This is what we find today. And Ibn Rajab was writing this how many hundreds of years ago? So he initiates that and repeats it. And his intention is to belittle his believing brother by exposing his defects and bad qualities to the people so that some harm can fall upon him in this world. But as for the person that is sincerely advising, his aim in doing that advising is to eradicate the faults found in his believing brother and to help him avoid it. This is what Allah the Most High has described his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with saying, 
لقد جاءكم رسول من انفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم and verily there's come unto you a messenger from amongst yourselves it grieves him that you should receive any harm or difficulty he is anxious over you to rid you of your faults and sins for the believers he is full of pity kind and merciful this is the nature of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if you want to say you're following the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the method of the salaf of this ummah then this is the uslub this is the means that you would take not racing to get a fatwa to belittle your brother not racing and rushing to uh, belittle and 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 belittle him or her and destroy their honor but rather rushing to advise them to repel their evil wallahu musta'an then he said and he described his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam companions with that saying muhammad rasulullah walladhina ma'ahu ashad ashadda'u ala kuffar ruhama'u baynahum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem muhammad is the messenger of allah and those who are with him meaning his companions are severe with the disbelievers and merciful towards one another so this is the way of ahlus sunnah this is the madhhab and the methodology of ahlus sunnah which we should be traversing not being shadeed with one another severe with one another and gentle with everyone else but rather we should be illustrating the best and the highest of qualities as believers and covering one another's faults if it's coverable and if it's something that needs to be repe- repelled and spoken about outwardly then of course we do <laughs> may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with tawfiq and he described the believers with the characteristics of patience and mutual advising of one another towards mercy and compassion but what drives the evil doer to propagate his brother's evil and disgrace him is force and harshness his love for abusing his believing brother and his desire to inflict some harm upon him these are the characteristics of the devil the one who beautifies disbelief sin and disobedience to the children of adam so that due to it they may become amongst the dwellers of the hellfire and the law says <clears throat> in the shaitan lakum adun fattakhidhu adun in fattakhidhu fattakhidhu hu adu inma yad'u hizbuhu liyakunu min ashab as-sa'ir allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem verily the devil is an enemy for you so take him as an enemy verily he only calls his party his his allah used the term his talking about his bees this is the pure uh, uh the worst form of tahazzub tahazzub bi shaitan so he said verily he only calls his party of followers to be amongst the dwellers of the hellfire wa iyadan billah and he says after telling us a story of iblis the devil when he was with the prophet of allah adam alayhi salatu wasalam and the evil plot that he unleashed upon him such that it brought him to be cast out from paradise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al karim o children of adam let not the devil deceive you as he got your parents out of paradise strip, stripping them of their garments to show them their private parts so what a difference there is between one whose intention it is to advise nasiha and one whose intention it is to disgrace fadiha and no one confuses one of these with the other except someone who does not possess sound intellect so that shows us ah ya ahl sunnah that it is from intellect to be able to distinguish the 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 difference between advising someone and causing someone harm riba in the mima and that ahl sunnah must have fiqh of this and ahl sunnah must strive to be of those people who advises their brother in goodness and 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 yes we correct the errors and mistakes of ahl sunnah and other than ahl sunnah and ahl bid'a that is permissible to refute them that's not what we're saying so we hope the people don't misunderstand this that this is from the deen this is from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered with us with commanding the good and forbidding the evil 
And this is what the minhaj of the Salaf comprises of, or is comprised of, or this is a part of the minhaj of the Salaf, Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim. However, we have to understand it with fiqh. And that we have to make sure that our intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to advise our brothers and sisters and to repel their evil. But that our intention is not to belittle, harm, attack, destroy their honor or them in this life. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with fiqh fi deen. May Allah bless us with ilm al-nafi, rizqan tayyibu, wa amil al-muntaqabbil, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.